Okay, people. Hello, humans. Hello, humans. So it's um, 23rd of January, 2024. It's uh, 2.24 p.m. Uh, here on the West Coast. 63 degrees outside, so reasonably warm, and I'm able to get in my office what's left of it. A lot of damage from the storms in December. Anyway, um, so you may have followed my Twitter. You may know that I'm going to be embroiled in a legal battle with the uh, producers of the CBDs that had um, hidden a particular component by using a species name as opposed to the descriptive name. So it was um, the descriptive name is soap bark tree extract. And the descriptive or in the species name was uh, is Q U I L L A J A extract. And this is a, um, a soap bark tree extract, and it um, really fucks you up. Okay, it it causes the thinning of the mucus lining of all of your elementary canal from your um, stomach on down, and it, and it can cause bleeding, which is what it did with my dog, because I didn't know it was in there, right? I didn't know that if it, if it had said soap bark, I would have recognized it, but I didn't realize this was in the uh, CBDs that was giving him for his arthritis. So now I'm battling to try and keep him healthy and well, um, or recover, actually. He may die yet. We just don't know. Um, you know, I got C60 uh, Purple Power today from Ken Schwartz. I'd ordered it a while back for myself because I had a big container of it here that a guy was working for me and he set it outside and ran over it with a tractor <laughs> and crushed all the bottles. So anyway, uh, I had to get some new stuff, but it arrived today. So the dog has got his first dose. I'll give him another dose later and then I'll give him a third dose before um, uh, we go to bed. And uh, that will really should start kicking him up into a much more recovery mode. If I can get him through the next seven days, it's very likely that we will be able to get him uh, out of this. It would take a long time, though, like months, uh, because of the damage that stuff done, did. And humans shouldn't take it either. It's a, a foaming agent, and they put it in soaps and crap. Um, and the, I know why they did it. They used it to keep everything in suspension in water. Uh, because uh, CBDs don't like to dissolve in water. Anyway, today's little video is not about that, okay? Just inadvertently, I bring it up because it set off a chain of circumstances and that is related to AI. Um, and that's what I want to talk about, is artificial intelligence. Uh, there are people out there saying things, Kerry Cassidy and Gene Decode, among many others, but these two are leaders, about AI that is absolute bullshit, absolute fucking horseshit, cannot happen, technically impossible. It's an illusion. It's a delusion in their, their minds. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the technical stuff on this. I'm going to give a description of how AI works, and then we'll call it quits for today. As I go forward in my legal proceedings against uh, the company that makes that CBD stuff, that company is greenrevolution.com. But as I go forward in my legal proceedings against them, I'm using AI to do all my boilerplate legal work, right? And to do some level of legal research, but not much, uh, because you can't trust the AI. That's another thing. AI lies. It, it, and it tells you when you sign up, you know, always double check this shit that our AI throws errors constantly. And I, I will get sometimes 20 or 30 notices a day um, on these AIs saying elevated error level at this moment, okay? Now I'll get into that, some of that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to use the AI. I will make more videos in which I will set it up better than I've got at the moment. And I'll be able to do screen shares where I can type the prompt into the AI, show you what I'm doing, and then we'll see the response. And you can see how changing the, the prompts what is known as prompt injection, a PI, um, changing that slightly will cause an entirely different output from the AI. And uh, how to basically understand what's going on and how to use AI in legal matters. Okay, so it's going to, we'll eventually get to pretty much probably a complete coursework. I'm suing this company for $10 million, and we'll see how far it goes, but um, 
uh, we'll do it in real time and, and I'll show you the strategies as well as the use of the AI for the, um, as a tactic, okay, as a tool. AI is stupid. It does not think. So let's, let's describe AI so that everybody understands. Um, AI is an index, okay? That's all it is. So, all right, first, let me back up. Uh, Gene Decode and Kerry Cassidy frequently say that AI wants. AI does this. AI decided to do that. AI wants to do this. AI has this, this um, goal. All of those are bullshit, okay? All, of that, all those statements they make are absolutely delusion. AI has, cannot possibly want. It cannot possibly desire. It can't feel. It has no sensations. There's no awareness of itself or anything else. And it is not a, um, uh, an integrated whole anything. It is a collection of computer code that is spitting out an illusion to your mind based on dealing with words. Okay, so you as humans have emotions, you have desires, you have goals. All of those, 100% of those are directed by hormones in your body. Okay, that's how the, the process of your mind wanting something derives. Uh, even as simple as um, uh, wanting something for your stomach, you're hungry, right? That is prompted by a hormone uh, in the hypothalamus and the thalamic a gland area in the in the brain. Um, if you're a male and you have low testosterone, you won't want a woman. There won't be any desire. There won't be any um, elevation of activity. Uh, if you're male and you have too low a testosterone, movement becomes difficult, and and so on. Testosterone is a is a hormone that makes men feel movement as something fun. Okay, it makes movement. Uh, an intriguing, interesting thing to do. Hormones govern all of your emotions. Every single one of your emotions is connected to a hormone or multiple hormones in a blend, okay? Uh, there is no activity of your brain that involves an emotion that does not involve a hormone, good or bad. If you get depleted in the ability to make hormones, you go into this nasty spiral, but it will also, that depression, that evil... Um, uh, uh, shrinking from life and everything is also a hormonal response through the cortisol part of it all. So I'm not going to get into why humans work and their emotions much more than that. Just to state that without hormones, you have no activity. Without appropriate levels of hormones, you are unbalanced. Uh, your mind is unbalanced. Um, Hormones cause every single desire and activity within a human expressed in our world here. Every single one of them in, in moving the body and activating the mind within the body. So as a doer in the body, everything that you do is a result of uh, hormones. Whether you put them there through a complex association of your mind causing your body to feel desires about specific things in an abstract that are then tied back to real hormones that are in a base level, or whether those hormones arise naturally at a base level and then percolate up like, oh, I'm hungry, I'd better go get some food, and oh, oh, I want this as opposed to that, right? Desire equals the ability to have a decision. And so you, you don't make decisions if you don't have the appropriate hormones. There are hormonal diseases where you can't decide, where you can't make a decision because of a lack of particular complex of hormones. So note that this is true of animals, it's true of everything. It's even true of like trees. Trees attempting to seek for the light that, that at that base level within the cells is basically a hormonal response to the outer environment insofar as those trees have hormones. They're not quite the same, okay? It's a different thing in plants, but it is fundamentally intrinsic to the plant. Just as hormones are intrinsic to you and hormones are intrinsic to animals and so on, and if you don't have those hormones, you don't act. You ha don't respond. You're 100% passive. Um, if you get your hormones fucked up by people, if people deliberately do things to fuck over your hormones, uh, you can go into different mental states that they may want to cause you in, right? And so, uh, to be in. And so, uh, you have to watch out for this. They will do things. So, uh, we see these very subtly. Uh, the hypothalamus, where the hormones are, is very sensitive to smells. 
So you go to the Catholic Church, especially um, Greek or Russian Orthodox churches, and they'll be in there throwing their little, uh, I can't think of what they're called, the little incense burner things full of frankincense and myrrh. Incenses that cause a particular hormonal thing to occur in your hypothalamus that produces a particular mental effect. And it aids your experience in their theater of religion, okay? So they know that. So you can affect a person's hormones all the hell and gone. Now, AI has no hormones. It has no body. It has no awareness. AI is computer code. AI works by indices. So we're going to use some computer diagrams here. This is the CAN diagram. Should be better. And it's supposed to symbolize disk drives, okay? This back in the day when you would graph code. And so you would draw, and this is, this is a, the data uh, repository, which we usually call databases. Uh, database, okay? That's the physical form of it. On there are individual files that are individually databases. So there might be hundreds, there might be thousands, and so on, right? Databases, lots of databases. In each and every database is an indices that allows that database to be searched very effectively so that you can search on a keyword or some manner, right? And so in the data itself, it would have the keyword you're after in the index, and it would have some form of a reference. Uh, usually it's a long numeric value that describes where on the actual, in a logical sequence, where on this uh, storage media, the, that particular keyword can be found. And it may have hundreds of these because maybe that keyword is in there hundreds or thousands of times. There, ergo, there would be thousands of these listings, perhaps, or tens of thousands or millions, right? So, um, AI is, is a search engine. AI is, um, it does not think, it doesn't make decisions, it's just weird, interesting software. Most software can be thought of as uh, files of computer code with one line causing a particular action, okay? And then these combination of actions cause a bigger effect. Uh, and then there's more actions, and it's read sequentially. So it does the first line, then it does the second line. And maybe when it does the second line, there's a, um, a break point, a, what humans would call a decision point. But in the code, it's a break point. A happens or B happens. Uh, in, you know, the person pushed a space bar or they pushed the carriage return line feed. And so you have different actions based on what the human did. And then maybe that would cause this to jump down to another section of code and, and not act on those lines of code because you had chosen the space bar over the carriage return. Um, computer codes will go sequentially. They can be very large. They can be repeating. Maybe you get down into here and it jumps you back up. And then it, you keep doing this until you accomplish the task as the software engineer had decided it should be done relative to whatever task that is. Okay, so that's ordinary software. AI is not quite like that, okay? AI uh, derives from an interesting process. So rather than being a sequential top-down except for uh, looping um, sort of a thing for, for uh, this, uh, AI works by a collapse, what they call a collapse of the weighted potential on indices. Okay, always remember, it's all operating on indexes. That's all it is. And so here's what happens with AI in a general sense. Now, this is going to be analogous, not technically accurate, because I don't want to get into it now, and ha because in getting technically accurate, we would have to make sure that everybody understood exactly the words, the technical words that were involved. And that's not necessary for you to get the idea of what's actually going on and then to pursue this discussion about gene decode and Kerry Cassidy's problems with AI. So in these databases, there's an index. Each and every one of them has an index. All of them, thousands, millions. The, um, let's, uh, so just right now, bear in mind that the uh, Internet is very large and that all of Google only indexes 3% or less of the active internet on any given day. So 
So when you search Google, you're only searching 3% of the internet. Much of it is never, ever, 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 ever uh, indexed. So only 3% is indexed at any given time. And that is a, still a massive amount of data, as you know, right? You can't read all the internet. Anyway, so what AI does, or let me, let me describe how AI is built. AI is built, unlike writing computer code like this, AI works off of, a, of training, okay? What they call training, and I'll explain that here. Um, in training, you have something like this in the way of computer code, but it's a little tiny chunk, and it's called a neural net, okay? Uh, or a neural node, actually. And that would be one little tiny instance. And maybe this neural node has got 100 lines of code in it, right? And that's all it is, just 100 lines of code. Uh, whereas your browser might have, you know, 5 million lines of code or something for all the shit it can do because of all the options and the decision points, the break points. Um, AI here has, has a neural node that, that does something. Usually these neural nodes are uh, training in the sense that they produce an outcome. Now, these, the neural node is not run like this top down and letting it loop and so on. This would be the equivalent of maybe one little tiny loop in, in real code here. But how you use a neural node is you make that, that you have a bigger program that invokes the neural node to train the AI, okay? Training. And it invokes a neural node and it may, it may make it may invoke this thing 25,000 times or 50,000 times in a single run, in a single program. Okay, it may, it'll, it'll create the neural node and it'll give it a number one and then it'll say go off and work. You know, basically put a pointer to that very first instruction set and activate that on a active thread uh, within the CPU. Okay. And so that, that code will be running at that point. And then the master program, which is still running in the background and controlling all this, will pop off another neural node and then another one and another one and another one. They all get individual numbers. They all become active. And then what it does is it aims them at these databases. More specifically, it aims them at the indices. Okay, so the, the AI neural nodes usually don't read the raw data. This is why they get shit wrong frequently. If these guys here had indexed badly, then all this guy is going to get is bad indices. So we have this saying, garbage in, garbage out. Okay, out, not zero. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. And so if these guys did a bad job indice, indice, uh, in making their index, uh, and their matrix of indexes for their databases, and AI is training off of those databases, and you're going to get bogus AI with built-in flaws and stuff. This takes a lot of computing resources to train an AI, okay? AI does this basically, uh, uh, an operating AI does it once before becoming operational, or maybe hundreds of times or thousands until the, the managers of that AI get it the way they want, but basically they could have gotten it on the first go, and it could have been launched at that point. After running maybe uh, 25,000 neural nodes, and having the output of these neural nodes pop up, then AI is trained and it could run. And it's trained in the sense that it knows through this process where these indices are for the key words. Okay, and that's all it knows. It's never read the data, it has no understanding, it can't understand anything. It can only deal with language and the interrelationship of language to each other. And so it knows the connections between key words in uh, all of these databases and how they're all interconnected over and over and over again. And you end up with this um, selection uh, of interrelated words that can drag along other words with it when you get that particular indices. So AI sends its stuff out here and it reads the, all the index. Every single one, bing, 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 bing. And then it, it, each one of these neural nets makes a conclusion uh, based on how the code is written and it pops up with another index. Okay, so the neural node basically comes up with 
an index, a listing, uh, basically a list of this information here about the indices, and it, it adds this little thing in there, and it's called a weighted average. Okay? A weighted average is where they put a numeric value to specific words being used against each other in some of these breakpoints that cause this kind of code change. You know, did he press this or did he press that? Instead of saying, did a user press a key, maybe the breakpoint says, does this indices here have the keyword we're after in enough bulk, in enough associated bulk with other keywords for this to get a, a neural, uh, numerical uh, reference of uh, some value? And if it does, what is that value? And so it might be, so it's basically assigning a weighted average conclusion that comes from running these neural net nodes over and over and over again on this process right here. And so it comes up with a conclusion set. <coughs> and that conclusion set is actually what forms the, the cognition part. doesn't think, it's just misapplied word. But that, that conclusion set is what actually causes the conclusions within AI when it spits something out at you. And if you use AI, you know that, oh, well, shit, that doesn't work. Tell it to redo, tell it to redo, tell it to redo, because you're getting bad conclusion sets because of some flaw, usually because of the way you ask the question, but that's a separate issue. Okay, so they may run these 25,000 times. They it would generate 25,000 conclusion sets. Those conclusion sets are basically another database that's also indexed. Okay, and so this is where the AI resides. It doesn't live, that's where it's housed, is in the database of indices. So in this sense, we'll just call it DBI, okay, a database of indices, and it has its own index, uh, which is searched by the, the reader of the AI, that thing you interact with through a browser, that browser program invokes this particular indices based on the words that you give it. And what it does is it takes your words from the screen, yada, 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 yada. You hit the carriage return, and then it sends these words to a language interpreting thing, right? It's your language interpreter. That, was, that language interpreter is what's known, um, is the entry to the large language model that is the database, okay? It is a model of words. That's all AI is. It has no desire, it can't think, it doesn't live, and it has no awareness. All right, let's look at some practicals. So you understand, basically, you're talking about a computer code. There's one little interesting part that I find quite fascinating, and this is what's known as the collapse of potential. Okay, so it's an electrical potential too, right? As well as an indices potential. But here's the thing. You can ask AI program a particular question in a near human fashion, and it will send it down to its language interpreter and come up with a numeric a set of uh, values that it can apply against the indices to give you an answer. And this part right here is the key. It's basically this kind of a computer code that does brute force um, interpretation of what you've said against um, the large language model internally to come up and com uh, convert your human language into a computer uh, kind of a code question that it then puts against this database to get at all of these other databases without you having to go through them one by one by one and make your conclusions from that. It does this by a collapse of potential. And you can think of this in an interesting way. I think this is a very helpful way to think about it. While you're asking the question and while it's running through it and doing all of the searching, it's as though that it's drawing all of these uh, connections between nodes of between these individual databases up here, and it forms some matrices of connections that we could say that each one of these little nodes here represents a possibility, and the lines between them represent the potential that any of those given nodes are the solution to your question, 
okay? As it's running its code, what it ends up doing is it ends up building link after 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 link around the language associated with your question being converted into computer language, computer speak. If you notice, some of these particular nodes have more links than others. That's the collapse of the potential. It'll get to a point where this code here says, okay, once you've got 55,000 links, that's it, collapse it, spit out the answer. And so it will, it will measure some number of links and it will decide based on that at what point to collapse the potential of that value and say, okay, we're done, right? This is the answer, or it's going to be as good as it can get. The collapse of the potential within these uh, AIs is about 70%. So once it has, has done about 70% of the possible, first it asks, what would be the possible number of nodes that could ask this, answer this guy's question? It asks this in a goofy way of itself comes up with a number. And then one, usually once it, you've got about 70% of that, uh, that particular number in links, it'll collapse the potential because that's good enough, right? And to get those last 30% takes as long as the first 70%. To get the last 10% uh, takes as long as the first 90%. So the further you go making these links, the longer the, the whole process is gonna take. And you wanna balance this between speed and accuracy, which is fundamentally what the AI is trying to do for you. Okay, so we'll just assume that that's valid. It collapses the potential. And what it does is at that point, it reads those that have the heaviest weight of the answers, and it uses an internal algorithm that is hard-coded into it as to how to present that to you, showing you that first this guy, then that guy, and then maybe incorporating that guy and this guy, those, those answer indices into your answer that it gives you. Okay, but again, if they've badly done this, then you've got garbage in, so you need garbage out. So this is how you end up with all the errors, is this complex aspect of all of this shit right here. Okay, um, and that's AI. It's really no more complicated than that. It doesn't think, there's no cognition there. It, it, you know, there are people that will make statements that are just 100% bogus. First off, there's no awareness within this computer code, and there can't ever be because of the nature of awareness and hormones. Um, you'll see some people make statements that uh, AI knows something we're applying, and it you don't, does not really know anything. It just collapses the potential based on mathematics. This happens due to the computer um, hard-coded algorithms that it's dealing with, and uh, we apply, we misapply words to AI that give us a false understanding of what it is. And this is quite common uh, in, in, in all of human activity with it. You'll see some companies that will say, well, we're, we're going to be crushed by AI. It's and uh, they'll say, um, you know, we don't know what their particular fear is. But they'll, some companies will say, we're keeping our AI away from the concept of consciousness that if we tell it what consciousness is, it will become conscious. Bullshit. It's computer code, right? It's, it's ones and zeros, it's little digits and shit. Um, you'll see some companies that are afraid of AI uh, in a valid sense in terms of altering the social order by becoming so good at particular tasks that humans are not required to do it any longer. That also, to a certain extent, that fear porn is bullshit because humans will adapt and the, it will adapt to AI and we'll be quite happy. I love using AI as an assistant. It eliminates the need for me to have to explain things to humans. It speeds up the whole process. I get a reasonable, it's always 70%, I get a reasonable uh, shot is about what I would get out of a human, right? So in this sense, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, useful that way. Uh, but as I say, humans will adapt. We won't be crushed by AI. It'll become a cool little tool for us, especially as we get into analog AI, which I'll get into at some other point, as opposed to digital AI. But let's talk digital for a second. Uh, many of you may know that in 1997, I or 93, I came up with the idea. In 97, I'd had the code written. It's a lot of fucking code. I'd made myself a large language model AI that worked 
in a different fashion than what we see here, because I was never trying for a generalized AI. I was trying for a very specific language interpreting AI, okay, for my particular needs. And so I come up with this. I called it the Alta Reports. I ran it from 1999 until about 2018 when I died. I did another couple of reports shortly after that, and then that was it. Uh, because of some of these issues that I'm going to bring up. It is digital, okay? The, the whole internet is digital. So gene decode saying that AI reads the internet three to 500 times a day is horseshit. Uh, I would take 18 days, and I was running a, a big, sophisticated, multi-processor server from Weiss, sort of like a little home um, IBM machine, or, you know, was more like a, a Sun uh, super server in terms of its function. Uh, but I was running these things, and it would take me 18 days to sweep one fucking percent of that 3%. Not one third of that 3%, but one fucking percent. Because the internet is so huge, and you just generate so much stuff. And then also, he says, the AI reads the internet three to 500 times a day, and A, that's horseshit, because AI does not read, it is trained, and... Um, uh, there would be no need if it could read it even once why would it bother reading it again 300 times in a day right what would change would be minimal and you find what changes in indices so you could it might be appropriate to say that ai could read the indices a lot right and come up with what had changed but that would be as far as you could take that statement all right um plus is not physically possible. You cannot extract that kind of volume over the internet by an AI uh, at all, ever. And if it should even come close to, say, 1% of what he's claiming three to 500 times a day, none of us would have access. You wouldn't be able to upload videos because all the internet would be doing would be feeding the fucking AI. Also note that... Um, uh, digital transfers take a while. They take a certain amount of read time off of drives and so on. They cost money and so on. So we see that some companies like New York Times are suing uh, chat um, GPT AI, maybe others, for using their databases to train with because it costs the New York Times money to have these other people run code and hit on their databases causing read and write activity. Because bear in mind, the AI doesn't take copies of this shit. It, it's just is taking that copy in RAM for a few minutes and then coming all, all the way up with this shit in order to come up with its own master set of indices from which it can collapse potential. And so it doesn't really store any of this, but it does cause mass amounts of activity as it's doing the training. And so the servers at the New York Times and the Washington Post, whoever it was that was suing these guys, would have been just banging away like mad, reading and writing, all of this, uh, their indices to supply AI as it's doing its training. This is one of the reasons I don't run these, sorry about that, this is one of the reasons I don't run my program anymore. When I first started off, no one gave a shit about web scraping. Web scraping is when you have one PC or one computer re, or come and take the data from another PC without bothering to put it on the screen or do anything with it. It just goes from one disk to another and then you process it on your own disk, which is what I used to do. In the early days of the internet, no one thought about the costs of this kind of activity, right? And then ultimately, it got to the point where places like Twitter, Facebook, and so on were throwing real fits about all of the bots, because basically what I had written was an AI bot that was a language interpreter going towards psychic impressions out of humans that leak out. So it couldn't happen. Gene decode is full of bullshit. It would cause mass amounts of chaos. Nobody would get access to the Internet, and there would be vast quantities of cost. And places like Twitter and New York Times and all these kind of things would instantly shut it off because they're getting vast quantities of cost. The drives running, everything breaking down, people having to work on it to maintain it, their routers, the bandwidth, all of that kind of shit. And no revenue because there would be no humans looking at any of the ads. Uh, and so they couldn't legally charge, right? And so this is the conundrum, this is the problem with AI. Um, okay, so gene decode is dismissed, right? I don't, I've looked at that guy's language, I've listened to enough of it, and I distrust him, okay? I think he's lying. 
and I know he's stupid and technically non-proficient because of many of the statements that he makes, uh, and we'll just let it go at that. I have no interest in, no want to hear anything from this guy. Now, Kerry Cassidy is another, another one who has AI fantasies, okay? Uh, first off, let me back up to Gene Decode. He also says AI wants stuff, wants, has desires, wants to do things. Bullshit. It has no hormones. It can't do anything. All it can do is a computer program that collapsed potential uh, of indices. Um, a, okay, so getting back to Kerry Cassidy. Kerry Cassidy is desperately afraid of AI. Alien AI. Oh my God, alien AI coming here to Earth. And so the question arises, how is it coming here? Is it floating through space? Well, maybe not. Is it coming on a spaceship? Okay, that's fine. It's coming on a spaceship. How is it going to connect to our internet? How is it going to do anything? Does it use the same digital approach that we do in terms of the electrical potential in the chips? Uh, can it convert whatever mechanism it works at to our digital? Does it understand any of our languages? Any of that? Can it get access? And then you have the same issues all over again. If we had AI uh, from aliens fucking with us, we would see it in the money being uh, spent by these companies trying to maintain these indices and the bandwidth and the routers and all of that kind of shit as this AI was eating our, our data. They would know. We would see it happening. The, the technicians that monitor the, the network, you, you wouldn't believe it. There's a guy sitting out there right now at Rumble. That's where I'm thinking I'm going to load this up. He's sitting there right now. Uh, watching meters and flow and probably has a eight, maybe 12 screens around him monitoring various aspects of what's going on, all of which relate to the read and write heads hitting on these databases that supply all of these videos to the feed to get out onto the net, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So he's using his, probably is using his own form of AI to monitor all of that. And it, it probably has areas that he's set saying if this particular value on this particular database gets up too high, let me know, you know, that kind of thing, right? We've got a bot problem or whatever. And he may have hundreds of these or thousands of these conditions that AI is monitoring for him on this vast array of hardware to give him, as the network admin guy, some level of control over all of this shit that's going on. And so AI from aliens, A, we would see it if it was digital and hitting our network, and B, if it's not, digital or our kind of digital, <coughs> many different ways it could be digital that would not be ours. And, you know, different kinds of math and all different kinds of stuff. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, so, uh, so alien AI coming here to, you know, uh, eat our lunch um, is horseshit. It's a delusion that Kerry Cassidy has. Uh, a, there's no alien AI floating around. It's not non-corporeal, it needs a, a hardware to operate on if it's AI, if it's artificial, if it's artificial intelligence. There's no reason that space aliens AI, other than advancement over centuries, as opposed to our nascent approach to it here in just the last few years, but there's no reason that alien AI would in any way be superior to what we're going to come up with, right? It has to grow, it has to have a base, and then it'll be stepwise refinement for a number of years. So, uh, so Gene D. Code is full of shit. Kerry Cassidy is full of shit. They both have lots of fear porn that they're generating about AI. None of it can be taken seriously. And Kerry relies on authority. She has people like David Adair telling her that uh, this AI is sentient. Uh, the one he interviewed in Saudi Arabia is sentient and thinks and all of this kind of stuff. No, it does not. It's not aware. Even though it's in a little robot, it doesn't have hormones. It doesn't have desire. It's, it, it's only um, mimicking the desire because someone put the code in there to, to put a database indices to desire that it thinks that it can apply to its, <coughs> that the coder thinks it can apply to its body to mimic this, okay? So it's like any other robot. It just sits there until you force an interaction on it because it has no desires of its own. It has no concept of doing anything on its own. Um, so Kerry Cassidy relies on authorities such as David Adair who are not authorities. They, they don't have any other um, extra understanding uh, of what's going on that uh, they can say is valid over anybody else's understanding on this particular material. 
And so, but in any event, she believes them because they are whistleblowers. And this is the top dog authority in her world is a whistleblower. And so she has prisoners that are um, amusing themselves, uh, uh, prisoners that have been uh, sentenced to life in prison, that are amusing themselves by feeding her bullshit stories about alien AI. And she's taking them as an authority because she's put this authority on this prisoner and giving him a title of Captain Mark Richards. And he's in the secret space program. So he has all these labels and authority and shit. But he's giving her lies. And she's taking those lies and passing them on in her own form of fear porn. And so as far as AI goes, Gene Decode and Carrie Cassidy are some of the biggest fear porn people relative to AI. And they're making all this shit up. It's not physically possible for this to occur. And and if they if there was any form of an attack on our on our you know the cyber attack that the WEF's talking about, we'll see that coming. Network guys will see them launch it. We'll see it happen. Same thing with aliens. If they were to try and assault the internet, we would watch it, and network guys would be able to see it. They'd have tracks of it. They'd make. Uh, copies of what happened when and so on because it all comes down to the read and write heads on databases that are managed by these guys in this particular arrangement that we've got that's right now that's fairly complex. Okay, so the 40 minutes on this, uh, I'll shut this one off and we'll, the next time I do it, I'll figure out a way to do screen shares and we'll start interacting with AI. And my process here is to show you how lame AI is but also to show you how to use AI uh, to do lawsuits, same way I am, right? And so if someone gets on your case, you can get a chat API or chat GPT account and plug into your need for the lawsuit into that. You'd have these videos to go through and you'd be able to file a lawsuit pro se and go sue the fuckers for causing you damage. Don't, don't do it uh, maliciously though, right? There's gonna be, this kind of shit's gonna pl plug up the courts. So be very judicious in your use of AI in filing lawsuits. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's moral uh, or easier. Okay, uh, all right. <coughs> so I guess I'll shut that off and we'll have a go of uploading it. That's another issue here too. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I'll do another one of these about the lawsuit probably a week or two weeks out. And I won't be doing audio files for a while because I got a sick dog to tend to. We got all other kinds of crap going on here, and I got to get some of this um, stuff around here uh, built back up. But take care and don't fall for the fear porn. <laughs>